and easy, an easy to understand scripting language for us so we don't have to come up with something really obscure. Um, so this is a, an example of a um, script using real scum syntax. I actually found a document reminding me what the syntax was. So for example, walk Zach to object credit card um, that will make Zach find his way to the card and stop at a, an exact point, um, predefined place near the card. Wait for actor Zach, so that times out waiting for the script will time out until he actually gets there, then pick up again. Pick up object credit card, there might be a specific um, motion that he'll do to do that. Stay line, Zach. Wow, a credit card with a two-headed squirrel on the front. Um, so, you know, the text will show up in his color and his mouth will do the animation. Um, wait for sentence means wait a specified time until the sentence has is, is been on the screen for, um, for based on how long the sentence was. And do animation, Zach, face towards camera. So he'll, you know, do his animation to face. So it's, you know, there's not a lot there, but at least it was, it was clearly readable. Anyone could read this and get a sense of what was supposed to be happening. Oh. Okay, I'm all charged up. I'm ready to go again. Okay, so Maniac Mansion was designed by Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick. Um, these are some of the concept drawings from Maniac Mansion. Um, after about nine to 12 months of development on the SCUM system, plus designing the game, Ron asked me if I could help. So he asked me, he said, you know, could you do some scripting of the game? He thought maybe a month of my time should do it. Um, I think this was November. Um, it actually took, I think, about nine, it took nine, nine months for the game to be released. I don't think I was on it that long, maybe four or five months, totally. But it was, of course, way longer than we thought. Um, it's very hard to, to build a language and a system at the same time you're doing a game with it. They kind of you know, interrelate in a strange way. Um, but the game was released, and I think it broke a lot of new territory. This was also the first game that we self-published so now it says Lucasfilm Games on the back of the box. Um, and being new at publishing, we ran into some problems. Um, one was censorship. Um, there's a chain of stores in, in the United States, I think it was Kmart, which um, has had a huge order in, but they wouldn't take the games because certain words appeared on the box, like lust, um, obscene phone calls. <laughs> um, but they didn't mind things like burglary, kidnapping, um, electric cattle prods, <laughs> postal fraud, medical experiments, or world domination. <laughs> that was OK. No lust, though. I think lust was the killer. And it was near the top of the list that made it even worse. So we had to, I think we had to do a new box with those words removed. Um, so one of the other things that was unique about Maniac Mansion was um, you had multiple, play multiple characters you were controlling in the game. You start off by selecting, you, have, you always had to choose the guy on the left, Dave. His name was Dave, and that wasn't my doing. Um, really wasn't. I think it was D Dave and then pre-design. Um, and then two others, and games different based on who you choose. I think it's winnable with most combinations, just different puzzles which, of course, was one of the reasons the game took so long to create, because there were, every time you have multiple ways to do it, there, it, it it's not just linear. It, it basically, geometrically makes it more difficult to debug and to do right. Um, here's some of the characters. Um, <laughs> oh, this, another censorship issue. Um, this is the, the, the mummy's bedroom. Mummy's dead, but he um, had a mummy pinup book. Bulletin uh, picture on the on the side and a, a pinup calendar. When we did the conversion to the Nintendo version, they made us take those off. Those were too risque. Even though I mean you don't really see anything. And how many pixels are showing here? You know, this is. Um, also, we had to remove the statue for the Nintendo version um, because her her crotch was showing. We tried covering her up in some way, but that you know they thought it looked like you know they made it, made it, I think it made it worse. So. Um, and there's a great fan community for Maniac Mansion, so a new version came out pretty recently, um, done by, by fans, where they took the original art and they up, up it to um, 256 color. It's downloadable for free, um, nothing to do with Lucas. And as far as I know, Lucas is not being 
um, it's not going after anyone for these things, so grab it. I think it's only for the PC. A um, couple other examples. This is the original Commodore 64 art. This is a PC version we did in 16 color and the Maniac Mansion Deluxe version. Um, another one for Deluxe. Um, here's the, recognize the, is this the familiar to you? Anyone? Um, this website is where I grabbed, a, there's a huge amount of Maniac Mansion stuff. Um, most of the images I, I'm showing here on this presentation, I was able to just download, um, which was great. I did a few of my own screenshots on stuff, but I'd say 95% is on the net. So I made it really easy to, well, easier to put this together. Okay, one second. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk with this. This really tickles. <laughs> um, I wanted to do a, a new age game, um, something that um, dealt with spirituality and psychic phenomena, but I didn't want it to be serious. So. The general manager, David, uh, Steve Arnold, put me in touch with a good friend of his named David Spangler. Um, David is a, was a co-founder of Finhorn, which is a community in, in Scotland, um, which goes back to the early 70s, and a spiritual teacher, an author, um, and I think um, there's a list of some of the books that he's written, and I'll just go through these really fast, but he's... He was a great guy. And um, I'm going to take this off now. <laughs> um, we decided to put everything we could think of New Age into this game, anything New Age and spiritual into the game, um, including the kitchen sink, if you happen to know Zach, um, and the garbage disposal. <laughs> and one of the things that um, David came up with, um, I spent two days with him in, in Seattle, which where he lives, um, was the face on Mars. And back in, what was it, I think 1976? Yeah? I got my notes. On July 25th, 1976, Viking Orbiter 1 was acquiring images of the Sidonia region of Mars as part of the search for potential landing sites for Viking 2. And it took this photo. You can see it looks kind of like a face. So we decided it was a face. And there's a whole part of the game which there's a face, there's pyramids there. Um, we decided that, um, that there's an ancient civilization on Mars, and that's a whole part of the game. Um, this is the game art based on that. So rather than list everything we crammed into Zach, I think I'll read a letter from a fan. Here's the fan letter. Dear sir, I am returning this game, Zach McCracken, because I find it quite unsuitable. The excellent game, game playability and graphics further compounds the real problem. The game is saturated with new age Satanism teachings <laughs> and concepts. The following are a few that I and others have come across. Eastern religions and meditation. <laughs> African witchcraft and magic. A medium, a spiritual guru, and a religious devotee. A person who converts to an Eastern religion. A superior guardian race of ancient ones. One religion over all of time and all of the world. 